Hi, this is Trev and welcome to my blog. Welcome to part 12 of my Bedford CA van restoration. Thank you very much for your emails. Fascinating as always. Uh, V8 conversions and the like going on. Unbelievable. Anyway, back to the van. So, it's another bodywork this time round and it's the catering conversion this time round. I was going to go into a great big spiel about why I've done what I've done, but I just kind of think, well, you're watching anyway, so you're going to find out, aren't you? So, um, this is the catering conversion. Hope you enjoy the video. This is the completed repair panel for the passenger side quarter panel. You'll have noticed that I've welded a closing panel onto the top of the quarter panel. This will become the new door shut. See it's actually welded on at a slight angle, this is to allow the rain just to run out. I've epoxy masked the inside and I've brush sealed all the joints. All I've left to do now is to spot weld this. When I spot weld this, the heat won't damage all the inside, so all this will remain nice inside, won't go rusty. That's the plan anyway. Where I'm going to spot weld has all been zinc primed, ready to spot weld. The inside's been prepared. Exactly the same, painted nicely inside, all ready to rock and roll. Before I weld this quarter on, I'll just do a quick shot of the hinge, just to show how I've strengthened it inside. Hinge is welded, made a nice solid plate out of sort of two or three mil thick steel. This plate's then welded to this back, back section, the reinforced back section. I've also braced it from there to there, absolutely solid no movement in it whatsoever so it's nice and strong one last shot of the side of the van before i perform the task just in case you thought i turned into a giant the van's actually on wooden blocks i don't know whether the camera will pick this up but i've marked out on the side where i'm going to cut it finally down there and down there i've also made myself up a bit of makeshift scaffolding that i can stand on to gain greater access to the roof I'm nice and high now so I can get to the roof where I'm going to cut it across the top so this is it folks one last shot before I perform the task It's all cut through now, fine. I'm chuffed the bits, nothing sprung away, everything stayed in its place and it still seems super solid. So I'm going to lift the side off now, see what we've got left. Here's Johnny! I've completed fitting the internal gutter rail now. Also this panel here is only to support the outer skin. There'll be no load on this panel when the door shuts because what I've got to do next is I've got to build strengthening internally inside just behind where the door's going to slam. 
Taking some footage from inside the van now so you can see the back of the gutter rail. It's nice and compact, it doesn't stand out too far. So the next job is going to be to put some of this um, box in it, got some box which is the same spec apparently they used to use this for roll cages in grass track racing cars until they've changed the um, specifications now but I was advised to use this because it's uh, 2.5 wall thickness it's only 25 millimeters so I do tend to over engineer everything so I wanted something a little bit a little bit thinner really I didn't really want it to be too huge also I'm trying to keep the weight down a little bit as well um, and I sort of thought that this would be uh, just the job for what I want and it's so strong anyway um, this will just help to support the lip uh, so when the door slammed the lip will be nicely supported and also I'm going to build um, a frame for the coffee machine to stand on because the coffee machine is going to stand over this wheel arch and that's 55 kilos in weight so I need something quite quite strong to stand that machine on Don't really want that hitting you in the back of the head, do you? If you do an emergency stop. So I've made up my framework to support the door aperture. I've only been able to weld the three sides because the side I can't weld is between the van and the framework. So what I've done is I've made it detachable. It's bolted to the, to the inner quarter here and here. I've done that because I don't want to burn all my coating off on the inside. Also, it's nice so I can detach it, finish the welding off, then I can rust proof coat it between the frame and the van, and then I can finally fit it to the van, and it's going to be welded around the top section, along the lip where the tailgate's gonna slam against. The support frame is now welded in. It's a little bit ugly to look at, so I'm gonna make some capping and weld that over the top. So it'll look nice and smooth when it's finished, when you look into the van. I've actually used 18 gauge steel for the gutter panel. And what I've just done is I've spot welded in a two millimeter thick reinforcement plate from behind. Next I'm going to MIG weld the reinforcement plate to the box section. I'm also going to put some webbing each side of this plate. This will help to support the weight of the tailgate on the hinge. Also you've got to appreciate that there's going to be a gas strut trying to push this hinge up all the time. So it needs to be really strong. With the hinge reinforcement panel now welded in place, the hinges are fitted, 
I've got my capping finishing panels welded in now. This essentially draws the guttering stage to uh, a conclusion. It's finished now and I can now start on with the um, tailgate making the opening door or uh, the clamshell design as Andrew Thomas said. So this is what's going to happen next. Um, I'm going to cut some more box section up, make a reinforced framework for the original side to fit back onto. Plenty of head scratching to come yet folks, so let's see how it turns out. Aperture completed now. Next thing I've got to work on is making a framework that's going to fit this aperture that I've created. Now, we've already talked about the internal gutter, gutter to take the water away. The gutter that takes the water away has got this lip on it. Now this lip will hold a seal and when the door shuts against the seal it will form uh, a seal that is compressed. Now seal compression needs to be around 12 to 14 millimetres. At the extremes it can work at around about 5 millimetres to about 20 millimetres. Now it stands about 20 millimetres tall so 12 millimetres I feel will be about the right rate for the seal to compress and this is what it compresses on on cars that I've measured around about 12 to 14. So I've made these little blocks, lots of these little blocks now these, are, these stand at 12 millimetres tall. I'm going to use these blocks to gap my frame. I've got my door frame loosely made up now. It's all gapped and tacked. It's been an extremely tedious part of the job. But I've got to take lots of care to get this part right. All that's needed now is for me to finally weld these joints properly and um, tidy the whole thing up. I've utilised this Honda Civic rear boot catch. I've used a Honda Civic one for reasons that will become apparent later on. Um, I've had to make this adjustable plate up which is turning into a rather tedious job. So I thought I'd just shoot a quick video. Um, I'm about halfway through now. The biggest issue at the moment is you've got this threaded part inside that you've got to make captive because if you undo the bolts here, undo these bolts to remove the catch, that threaded part's just going to fall down inside and I'm going to enclose it in a box section. So you've got, to, you've got to make it captive and you've got to also allow it to be adjusted so that you can actually adjust the tailgate left, right, in and out. Interesting little job this has turned out to be. Interesting. So there's the finished striker plate welded to the inside of the van. I've welded it to the strengthening that I built to go inside of the quarter panel. So what's going on here? Why have I done what I've done? Well, I said about a minute ago, which is about two weeks ago in real terms, I'd use this Honda Civic catch. Why have I used this Honda Civic catch? Well, it's got this rather clever remote boot operating, cable operated as well. I didn't really want to go down the route of fitting anything electronic. So it's got this little sprung mechanism here. Now this sprung, sprung mechanism is cable operated. That fits in there. Now this cable, when it pulls, it turns this mechanism 
which springs the boot catch. Once the boot catch is sprung, and I fitted this Saab bonnet safety catch. So with this framework now finished off, my next job is going to be to make some internal panels to mount the external side back on again. I've started to weld my inner framework to the reinforcement now. I've got this two meter length of dead straight angle iron and I've tack welded this to the side of the van both sides of the door. This will give me a true reading of the exact position that the tailgate needs to be to line up with the quarter panel. Because how else are you going to do it without it being either sticking in or sticking out? So this is my this is my inner framework here. Um, I've used a nice thick piece of 18 gauge. This is the uh, box section framework that it's up against. I haven't welded it yet, I've just gripped it in place. I've put this little piece of 20 gauge steel between the framework and the angle iron. Uh, this represents the thickness of the steel of the outer skin so that when I then spot weld the outer skin to this inner framework it will be pretty much flush with the side of the van. I have just unbolted the frame from the van just to flip it up the other way so that I could grind some of the welds off and neaten a few things up. So I thought I'd just shoot this quick video of it off so that you can see the underside more clearly. This is where the uh, hinges bolt on. I've just welded these brackets on. These brackets are going to hold stops which will uh, regulate exactly where the tailgate shuts so I can trim the adjustment uh, to get the gaps as good as I can get them once the tailgate's on and finished, welded, painted etc. I've also shaped these panels now and welded them to the frame. These are exactly the same profile as the van side. Um, my plan is to spot weld them along here, the same as I did on the van side. This piece, where I spot welded it there, plan to do exactly the same with this on the piece that's left over. So the van side will be spot welded to there, and I'm going to bond it with screen bond around the top section. I will bond that first. When that once that's set, then I'll spot weld the rest round. There's the underneath as well. I need to take a little bit off this because this is a bit too tall at the moment. I want it to be a reasonable overlap so that I can seal it properly from the inside. I don't want these two skins finishing parallel with each other because if I do this then it's going to be harder to seal it from a corrosion point of view. A quick peek at the gas struts. They were off a Nissan van. Uh, it looked like a vanette but it had delivery written on the back so I don't know whether it's a vanette delivery or what it was. Anyway they're really really long struts. They're not too powerful. All I want to do really is take the weight of this. I don't want it uh, bionically ejecting anything up 
even if I have to lift it up slightly by hand, that's absolutely fine by me as long as it just takes the bulk of the weight. So uh, we we'll spring the catch, we'll release the safety, and there she is up in the air. has occurred to me while well, building this tailgate I really do need to put in a locking mechanism to lock out the struts because the gas struts on their own are probably only going to be just about strong enough to lift the tailgate up which is fine by me because just getting it up in the air and taking most of the weight is going to be great I didn't really expect them to hold it there anyway um, and if they did, and you solely relied upon the gas struts for this purpose, you only need something like a large gust of wind to come along, and then the thing would be uh, bending down and hitting you on the head. So it really has occurred to me now that I needed to fit some kind of lock. So I've robbed this off a, I don't know actually what it was, it was uh, some kind of Jeep looking vehicle like a 4x4 four four, but a smallish one and it was off the back door and it locked the door out I've had to make some modifications of course what I've done is I've extended this return line so when the tailgate goes up in the air this slides along and then it drops into that little hooked piece Look what I've managed to do is I've arranged this rod here I've managed to mount it far enough back into the tailgate so that its centre of gravity is off what this does is when you lift the tailgate up when it gets to the top it automatically drops across into the other part and then when the tailgate goes down it locks into position and the tailgate can't be put down then of course as always this wasn't long enough only by that much look I mean we're only talking about 15 millimeters stop the tailgate from fully shutting so I've had to cut the bottom off and take this track all the way down and then add a little bit on the end but it works well The finished inner frame ready for epoxy. Along the roof ridges, I've spot welded these alignment mountings on each ridge. I've also put a 3 16th hole in it. I offer this up to the van and then I will drill it through with an eighth hole, south tap of this to the roof. This will ensure that as the glue sets the roof will be in complete alignment. Prep the inside ready to epoxy that inside. So Trevor. what I thought I'd do is uh, Trevor. I, so I bonded the side back. Trevor. <laughs> Will you shut up? It's good to see you again. And you, and you sir. And you, and you, sir. Merry Christmas. And you, sir. And you, sir.
The site's been bonded in the roof area. I did this a couple of days, so it's had a couple of days to dry off well. Uh, I've got to use some pretty hefty weights to maintain a nice level gap, nice and even, so it flows straight from one into the other. I've only got a millimetres gap, which is no good at all, so I'm going to have to cut a gap before I can actually open this side for the first time. So that's what I'm going to do next. And then hopefully we ought to get this side up. And when, it, when I've got the side up, I can then spot weld it around the rest because this is still this is still flapping in the breeze. So this from there around should be bonded. Just removing my temporary alignment plates. Just to unscrew this screw. That's what held it to the old roof. I've drilled these spot welds through with a spot weld drill. So with a little wriggle, they just break off. So I guess I'm about 99.9% .9 finished as far as the metal works concerned on the side opening door. I've just put the gas struts back on and the latch and for the first time I've attached the cable. Cable guy! Cable guy! Cable guy! I just want to hang out! No big deal! So let's give it a whirl, see if it works. Ha! Ah. Why did I fit the safety catch? Well, we're about to find out. Picture the scene. You're driving down the road, 60 miles an hour, and uh, some passenger in the van says, Hey Trev, what's this little lever for? <laughs> oh, oh no. Yeah, so, yeah, it'll lift up, and uh, it'd be like a, a one-winged van doing 60 miles an hour so you can see why I went to the trouble of fitting the safety catch. These are my side door shut adjusters so that I can adjust the side in or out, top, bottom, left or right. So I've got one at the top, one at the bottom. I've continued the side stroke roof strut so I've taken the end of it down to my catch and the other end the roof one goes back to my reinforcement and that's the original roof brace that would have gone up inside here joined onto there um, same the other side of course it's all been epoxied inside polyurethane sealed well, of course he pops the whole thing eventually it's uh, such a nice close as well shuts well nice even gaps now and perfectly flush where it needs to be I've purposely built the lower edge out to stand out very slightly to compensate for the filler that I'm going to have to put in my lower quarter but it's not by much as you can just about see perhaps on the camera it's just a tiny little step and then when this quarter has got its filler on it'll run flush into the lower half of the door making everything look super smooth super flush which is exactly what I wanted. In the last part, I gave you a brief teaser of the sliding door now being hinged because I've compromised the door track. Unfortunately, I didn't take too much video of me actually modifying the door, but I'll just fill you in on roughly what I've done. I fitted a pair of transit rear door hinges 
this was big grief this job and I actually met, had to make her a jig up to hold the hinges in alignment uh, to weld the hinges to the door because if they're not in total alignment then what happens is the hinge will twist as it's opening and closing and it's only got to be a fraction out and it'll just snap the hinge clean off the door after just opening and shutting it a few times it seems to work really well and one of the main reasons I've hinged it from the rear is because there's far more strength in the rear of the van than hinging it in just this section here as I believe some of the pickups are also I managed to retain the handle at the front and at a glance I think it still kind of looks like a sliding door once it's all the same colour and it's lost its patchwork quilt effect and it's all smoothed off I think those hinges will blend in quite well opens and shuts really well really happy with it what I've done is I've cut the inside of a Corsair B door out and fitted the Corsair D a uh, Corsair B sorry a Corsair B catch and rigged it up to the original handle all works really well the lock's still operational so I can lock it there and it's locked and I can also lock the Corsa B lock so it's double locked now as well not much more I can say about that really the major part of the surgery because it's a sliding door it's got this protruding lip like it has on the rear it's got this lip on the rear and it did on the front and this slid into a channel of course when it slides into this channel it's sliding backwards and forwards so it slides up into the channel now it's not sliding backwards and forwards and it's swinging shut it has to miss the post on the front so I've had to completely remove it all the way around uh, something else I've had to do was I've had to heighten the the rain cover off the top track I've heightened it and I've spot welded a new lip along there I haven't done it at the back yet actually that's something else I need to finalize but it's you know it's there it works it opens it shuts it needs a seal around it now and it also needs a check strap and I think we'll be ready this part catch you in the next part from now on my parts are going to be updates monthly or six weekly something around that kind of area uh, because all the major parts of this van have been sectioned into projects per video I've actually practically finished all the modifications now and it just needs me to tie everything up bring it all together and get this van finished so a lot of people have been emailing me saying could we have some uh, faster updates so that's what I'm going to do from now on so catch you in the next part bye for now